This is the Power Break Podcast, number 175, titled The Gift of Gratitude. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to BobRubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. Hey, what's going on with you, man? The weekend after Thanksgiving and you choose the title of gratitude. You are sneaky, my friend. Sneaky. (laughs) Well, I wrote this in anticipation of uh, the Thanksgiving weekend, but by the way, we had a real surprise this past weekend when... uh, What was it? What was it? The surprise was JT and his family were down from North Carolina visiting their family, but also took time to come to the Brubaker household and enjoy some of Jan's vegetable lasagna. Man, yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. And... You know, me being the um, Neanderthal that I am, rarely do I cook without some kind of meat, which probably isn't sensitive considering my wife is a vegetarian. So um, we can't tell you how much we appreciate the vegetarian lasagna because it was delicious. Absolutely fantastic. Well, we enjoyed seeing you and your family, and uh, here we are back to the norm, and we're getting into this uh, podcast. Uh, Again, we're recording this the week after Thanksgiving. I believe it comes out the following week. But nevertheless, as we talk about it, we're talking about gratitude today. And first of all, let's express gratitude, JT, because our listeners are really making uh, a real reason for us to be grateful because they allow us to put this podcast together, and they listen to the podcast. Yeah, faithfully, too. Every time that you, we rarely, folks, actually discuss numbers, just, um, but when we do, I'm always so grateful at how many people not only, you know, give us a try or listen once, but um, people tend to come back and share with their friends. and, And it's just such a great thing for us to know that we're actually doing something that benefits other people, because really, that's what it's all about, right? That's right. And we put a lot of effort into it and making sure that we had to talk about subjects that are applicable. And uh, well, anyway, JT is a good um, person to have on the podcast and enjoy doing it with him. And we enjoy uh, hearing from you from time to time as you write to JT at BobRubaker.com. But also sure uh, we thank you for leaving a rating and or a review wherever you download the podcast and for your spreading the word on social media or word of mouth, however you do it to invite others to listen to the Power Break podcast, wherever podcasts can be found. Thank you very much. Yep. Awesome stuff. Well, well, JT, we're talking today about the gift of gratitude. So, JT, what are your top three things on your gratitude list? Oh, man. You know, it's it's funny because every day when I drop off my kids, I tell them, to tell me three things that they're grateful for. And then I tell them to focus on those things. Um, You know, when they find themselves frustrated or maybe, you know, they're having problems with a relationship with, you know, with one of their classmates or something, just anytime you get down, you know, just think about those things. So I'm trying to, trying to get that, you know, instilled, but you know, what's awesome now is now that we've been doing it for a while, Three is a minimum. Usually they'll go to like five, six, seven. They'll just start rattling off. So wow. what, I'm, what wow. I'm seeing is they're becoming more aware of the things that they should be grateful for. And what I'm aware of uh, is, A, I'm very grateful for you, my friend. Um, B, obviously, God has blessed me in so many ways. I, I, I don't know if I could I could list them. I uh, My health, my family, my uh, you know, my wife and how awesome of a, uh, wife she has been for me over the years, uh, my friendships that I have. Um, uh, but most importantly, Bob, you know, when I really sat down and thought about it, I'm grateful for forgiveness because Ooh, without great. forgiveness, um, man, I'm, I'm not sitting in God's grace. I'm not sitting, I'm not able to connect with him it, without forgiveness that Christ gave us. You know, we, we all, stood in judgment. And, Mm -hmm. um, I think that's probably the thing I'm most grateful for overall, you know? Um, and and the the longer I walk with Christ, the more I I realize that forgiveness is, is probably the, one of the most important parts of a Christian's walk. 
uh, whether it be forgiveness towards others, whether it be the for- receiving forgiveness from God, because a lot of us can't forgive ourselves for a lot of things that we do. So, man, that's uh, that, that's really what I'm grateful for is forgiveness. How about you, buddy? Well, first of all, let me just say that's a great point that you made. And yes, uh, top the list when any anybody that's a follower of Jesus Christ, top the list is all the benefits that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. Because as Paul said uh, in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians, thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. It's beyond words. So that yes, the gratitude for that. And of course, I'm very grateful that, uh, you know, first of all, that God has spared my life, as I'll talk a little bit more in the, when I talk about the uh, Power Break blog. But in 2005, I was one breath from death. But look what God can do. He spared my life back then. And uh, throughout that time, I always like to point it out whenever uh, we're at a, a wedding or I'm about to, to perform a wedding ceremony, officiate a wedding ceremony, I always point out in the in the vows that we're to stay together in sickness and in health and sickness and in health. Uh, we, we were uh, there at, when Jan stood by me when I was one breath from death. And I thank God for that. Uh, he has blessed me with a wonderful wife. And I, I'm very grateful as looking back on it now, I've been here at this church, Christ Community Presbyterian Church, 15 years. Uh, wow. So That's great. B- believe it or not, here we are. And so I'm very grateful for this church. Well, talking about gratitude, gratitude is so good for us. It's good for us physically. We'll mention later, but it's also good for us mentally, obviously, and of course, spiritually. It's so good, in fact, that God even commands us to be grateful. Um, he it says in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, to give thanks Now, notice this in all circumstances. Then he says, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks in all circumstances. So today it's the consideration of the gift of gratitude. So good, man. Let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog. Folks, if you haven't been over to bobrubaker.com, we're actually adding to the resources there. So definitely start checking that out. Uh, But at the very least, get over there and sign up for the blog. So that way you get that free of charge shows up in your email every Monday. Just a great way to start your week. Um, And yeah, let's continue to talk more about the gift of gratitude. As I wrote on the blog that uh, there's much talk about uh, this time of the year about the subject of gratitude. Our country's leaders designed a time for gratitude years ago. And although there is more emphasis in this day and age around Thanksgiving on turkey and football than it is gratitude, at least there is a pause. And at least there is the word Thanksgiving is still used in our vocabulary. I believe, however, there are many people who found that the benefits of an attitude of gratitude give more than mere lip service to the Thanksgiving season. As I wrote, again, from 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18, God commands us to be grateful. He says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's quite a command. Give thanks in all circumstances. Why? Because that's God's will. Uh, That sounds simple enough to understand, but it takes uh, great grace to carry it out. In fact, to be grateful to the command would mean that you seek God's help to be grateful. In other words, you need the gift of gratitude to be grateful. Okay, so I pointed out in the article that uh, in 2005, I was dying from an infection in my lungs and that would have my lungs would not respond to treatment. So my doctor sent me to National Jewish Medical Center in Denver, Colorado, which is the top respiratory hospital in the world. My wife and I prayed for a spirit of gratitude as we faced the most devastating time in our life. And God blessed us abundantly with that spirit of gratitude. Matter of fact, it was amazing to see God work in us and through us to bless others as my health de- even decreased, even to the point of a major lung collapse. Nevertheless, what we experienced both in God granting us the spirit of gratitude and in our expressing great gratitude to all the medical personnel at that time, every day, although I, it was very trying, it was also filled with great gratitude. And the result was a very positive atmosphere around us, both in us and also in everyone that we came near. Matter of fact, it was so infectious that uh, we saw God just work in other people, drawing them to sit around my bed, <laughs> even though I was off, out of the bed most of the time, and uh, because I just uh, wanted to wanted to get better fast, and so uh, I was very grateful for all the help that I received, and people would just come and hang out in my room and give us great opportunities to talk about the grid and goodness of God. So 
God saw, saw us through that experience, which we are grateful, of course, but also blessed us in that experience to find the power of gratitude and his power working in us. So what I'm getting at is in the article, and I trust that you'll check it out, is that gratitude is something that God grants to us. It is a gift from him. And as we carry it out, we're doing it as he commanded us to do. But also we benefit physically, mentally, spiritually, and others benefit yeah. from that yeah, no, as, it, we, as we carry out with gratitude. Right, JT? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, you know, I, I was just thinking about how contagious that was when you were in the hospital, as you describe it. I mean, people saw that you were grateful in a circumstance that most people wouldn't be grateful, and it became contagious. They're like, oh, man, what, what does this guy have that I don't have? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, it really was, yeah. Yeah, and that's I mean, the thing I love about that story is um, you you did what James commands. You count it pure joy whenever you face trials and tribulations. And and you guys applied that with an attitude of gratitude. And, man, look at, look at the reward that came to other people as well as you. That was phenomenal. Yeah, it was almost like, though, we couldn't take credit for it because it was almost like we were watching a movie that we were watching – and you know the gratitude flow through us to others, and uh, we would kind of step back afterwards and say, "I, I, I didn't realize I was saying that." <laughs> and what we were saying was, you know, people would come in and just uh, they they would apologize for like taking tests in the middle of the night, you know, waking us up to do blood tests or whatever, and and I, and I would thank them for their service and. And, and I didn't really give a lot of consideration ahead of time that I was going to say that. It just kind of flowed out. And that's what I'm thinking is as we talk about gratitude, we know we should be grateful. And so we ask God to help us to be grateful people and see it flow. Wow. That's so cool, man. So what else is going on, Bob? Any news we need to know about? Well, I thought it would be an opportunity to talk about the power of gratitude is a a book that I wrote actually uh, soon after my experience uh, on, in 2005, The Power of Gratitude is to look at some of the things that God has, uh, in which he has blessed us and ways in which he has blessed us and to l- be a person of gratitude. So it's called The Power of Gratitude. It really takes over your life. And if you'll check out the books at uh, com, it's actually click on the resources and scroll through the resources to the books and through the books, you'll find a red cover. It's called The Power of Gratitude. And while you're at BobRubaker.com, be sure to check out the sermon links of the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church in Clearwater, Florida. Currently, we're going through an Advent series as we look forward to the first Advent of the Lord Jesus Christ and celebration of that in His incarnation. Check it out, the sermon links, the books and resources, all at BobRubaker.com. This is the Power Break Podcast. I'm JT along with Bob Brubaker, and this is the time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or Bob, feel free to email me at jt at bobbrubaker.com, and we'll get to answering that on an upcoming Power Break Podcast. Um, now, JT, I, I want to ask yo. you a question before we get started here. <gasps> I know. Go ahead. I mean, I was very grateful. I, it's not, I don't have it on video here because we're not on video. And I'm still looking, I need to work out a place, but you gave me a fine woodworking project uh, that you put together. And I just wanted to know in your retirement now, are you taking (laughs) up woodworking? You know, I've, I've taken up a lot of things that I had an interest in. Um, You know, Amy said, it had asked me, she's like, are, is that your goal is to be a woodworker? I'm like, you know, my goal is to kind of continue to be an artist. Like, um, mm. my entire life, whenever I took a test, it always came out that I was an artist. So, and that would probably explain the guitar stuff that would probably explain that I've always had the ability to draw things. I've always had the ability to do things artistically. And, uh, so when I came up here, the, the one thing that you have access to all the time is hardwood because it's everywhere. My backyard's mm. full of it. Um, and Mary in the city that I live in, as you drive in, there's there's hardwood um, businesses or kilns everywhere. Um, mm-hmm. So so really, I uh, I was like, man, this is a perfect opportunity because I've always I've always loved wood because it has such an incredible personality when it's finished correctly. Um, because you know the the growth of the wood is. Um, 
it, no two trees are different in their pattern and it's and it's pretty amazing to see um so i've always really kind of liked that so yeah when it, it was funny i made something for jan um which is amy's wife or, oh, amy's wife <laughs> <laughs> wow is that a typo um yeah. which is amy's mother my wife's mother uh and i also made something for my friend um fred for his, uh, he's in the con- he's in the process of turning uh, a van that he owns into like almost like a sleeper van, so he can travel in it. So, hmm. uh, so I made a sign for him for that. So, and then I made a sign for our house. So, yeah, I, I, and and I've got another project. I'm going to work on a table here coming up soon. So, wow. yeah, I guess the answer to your question is, I guess I am taking up woodworking, but it's not to sell it. It's because I just truly enjoy it. That's co- so cool. That's the other side of JT, folks. Not only is he a, a mountain bike uh, expert these days. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> ex- expert on the guitar, but also woodworking. So looking forward to posting some of those pictures of things that JT has made with his woodworking. You know, the question I get when I hear JT is retired, how old is this dude? He doesn't sound that old. <laughs> no, I'm, fi- I'm 51, um, which is young to retire. But, you know, how big of a gift is that, that I can spend this much time with my kids? You know, yeah. I have the gift of being able to drop them off in the morning. I have the gift of being able to pick them up. I have the gift of being able to organize, you know, their activities and spend more time with them than I ever could when I was a police officer. Because, you know, to be quite honest with you, my schedule always stunk. Um and I say that just, Bob, you were aware of how much um, I had to focus on trying to keep Sundays available and keep it a holy day and so I could serve at the church. But mm-hmm. the, that usually meant I gave up other weekend days or other days that were convenient. So um, being able to do that now and be so involved in my kid's life um, – and being able to help people because really, you know, I'm, I, I just started volunteering at my church um, now that we've decided that God has called us there. Um, yeah, so uh, to have this kind of time, um, it's just a pure blessing. So I, I'm trying to That's take right. as big an advantage of it as I can. Um, but, yeah, I'm only 51. So, Well, we appreciate your service as a law enforcement officer and, uh, you know, rightly so that you uh, have earned this time of being able to retire. And as you mentioned, what a gift that you're able to, to spend time with your boys, uh, times that you had to work uh, when you were a police officer, but now and you, you have turned your boys into magnificent mountain bike riders too. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they, uh, they won't have an excuse. They got something to fall back on. So I don't want to hear it when they're like, oh, you know, I got nothing to do. I'm like, really? You're an expert mountain biker? I think you could probably apply yourself to that. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I digress. All right. I think people probably want to want to hear us get to the questions. So let's okay. start. With question number one from the spiritual side of life. And once again, we're talking about gratitude. So if God commands us to be grateful, then are times when we are ingrateful a sin? And what a great question. Wow. Yeah, it is a good question. Well, if we went to James chapter four, it says in verse 17, whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. Well, that means that if we know we should be grateful and we're filled with ingratitude, That's sin. It describes people that are not followers of the Lord Jesus Christ in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And one of the marks, it says they're ungrateful. In Romans chapter 1, it talks about the people of the world that they don't uh, want to have anything to do with God. He says, although they knew God, they did not honor him, him as God or give thanks to him. So there's a mark of people that are totally anti God. And one of the marks is in gratitude, right? Wow. Uh, so in Psalm 92, it says, Give thanks to the Lord to sing praise to your name most high. And it says, Enter his gates in Psalm 100 with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and give thanks to him and bless his name. So a reminder in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, What do you have that you did not receive? <laughs> That's a good question, right? Some people Exactly time, right. Sometimes yep. we complain that we don't have enough, but... Exactly. What do we have that has not been a gift from God to begin with? And that means in Deuteronomy chapter 8, God 
through Moses, um, prepares the people and says, take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today, lest you have eaten and are full and have built houses and live in them. And when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and, and you have all uh, that you need and is multiplied, then your heart will be filled and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Wow. What is he saying there? Take care lest you forget God and are filled with ingratitude. Wow. So when we talk about it, the gratitude is good for our benefit. So God commands us to be grateful. It's uh, We have to remember that we are totally dependent upon him. So anything that we have received, we should be grateful. And it just opens the door for more blessings in life, physically, mentally, spiritually, why wouldn't you be grateful? <laughs> you know, and you know what's really sobering is that one of the words that I consistently hear Americans described as is ingrateful. Mm. In general, bitter and ingrateful. And what I see around me most of the time is those two things and the general, well, they, they call this country post-Christian, I, which is so sad for me. Um, but in the, you know, kind of humanist environment that we're in, um, that's probably the two that I see the most is ungrateful, uh, bitter and angry, uh, full of malice towards each other. Um, so those, not only is it awful for you, but it's also a sin, isn't it? It sure is. If you talk to anybody, you know, one of the the, the um, industries that's having a hard time filling positions is the restaurant industry. And if you yes. talk to anybody that's a server today, number one, people rarely leave enough tip. They are very stingy in their tips and they're very quick to uh, criticize and make demands of the server. And very yet true. they don't they don't live a uh, good tip. And so it's really sad, and especially when those people uh, will will, you know, make uh, an effort to make sure that the server knows that they are Christians. <laughs> that's, that's a sad. That's a sad account. But the point is that we should be grateful. And if we're not grateful, God says, you know, you have missed the mark because uh, just like the children of Israel had received so much from God. And uh, their ingratitude was saying that they would just forget about God. Put him on the back burner. It doesn't matter. Okay? For us, we need to say, yes, it does matter. And God has commanded us that we receive the benefits of gratitude by being grateful. There you go. Yeah, I mean, that's actually a perfect segue into question number two from the mental aspect. So how do we mentally keep an attitude of gratitude? Because we know it's important, and we also know that it's likely to lead us to sin if we don't. So um, what say you, my friend? I think just like anything else, we want to have a discipline about it. We decide ahead of time, that's what I want to do. If gratitude is means something to us, Okay, we should decide that's what I want to have. And so that we make we make a plan and then we practice that plan. And of course, that plan should include prayer to ask God to help us to be grateful people because we have, right. and, you know, even confessing to him and say, Lord, um, I have a tendency not to be grateful. So help me to be grateful today for everything that you have given to me. And then start out by making a list of the things for which you're grateful. What a great practice that you have started with your sons when you drop them off to school that they tell you things for which they are grateful. That is a great practice. You are setting them um, on, on a great path of life to, to be grateful people. And what a change yep. it should make, right? Oh, I tell you, it's, it, it is a difference between night and day. And one of the things that, you know, I, I've noticed, I noticed about myself, um, especially before I became a Christian years ago, I've, I've, I've been so blessed that I, that I've been able to change the way I think in a lot of ways and be transformed through scripture. But, um, one of the things that I that I remember always was, you know, somebody could come up and tell you 20 great things about a performance that you had or 20 great things about something that you did and give you one thing that as a criticism, but the criticism was probably out of love to make you do things a little bit better next time, um, which is healthy. 
and all you're going to focus on is that negative, right? Mm. That criticism that, um, and so many of us don't pay attention to the blessings around, uh, us. And we focus on the one thing that could be better. Um, and it's a very bad pattern of thinking to be in. We need to be That's so right. careful of that. Um, because, and I would actually, when I would sit down with somebody at work, I started to actually have them repeat back to me all the things that I said. And I didn't do that because I thought they were dumb. It was because I knew the natural tendency was they were only going to hear the one criticism that I gave them to improve their performance. They're going to mm-hmm. only think about that and they're, and they're going to go tell, you know, the people that they work with and complain and, and sit, you know, cops are horrible because if they have downtime, they, you always see those two cars together and they're talking to each other through that driver's side window. And, oh man, can you believe, you know, Sergeant Trevino did this or that and blah, blah, blah. And this is what he said. <laughs> you know, I know the natural tendency, so I'd make sure I'd be like, all right, let's talk about all the great things that you've done in this past year or, or whatever, uh, that I just told you about. And they would repeat them and I would focus in on those again and again and again. And I say, yeah. And you know, if you wanted to improve your performance, this is the one thing that I think could do it for you. And that's, that's that's good. Yeah. So, I mean, just as people, it's so important for us to develop that mindset of we're going to focus on those positive things. We're going to focus on those blessings. We're going to focus on being grateful for those things that were given to us. Even if they're not perfect, they're still better than the alternative a hundred percent of the time, usually. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let, me, so anyway. let me just, let me just repeat before we close out on this question and make a list of the things for which you are grateful and then practice gratitude with others, especially those close to you. So many times in, in like marriage relationships, the, the word, the gr- words of gratitude are hardly ever used, which they should be. And of course, making uh, a point in prayer to be more expressive of gratitude than asking. You know, that's a good way to weigh it out. But even it yep. says in Philippians chapter four, we're not to be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to let our requests be made known to God. So those things are helpful to get us going, even in a mental way, to keep an attitude of gratitude. Love it. Love it. All right. Third question. Let's turn to the physical aspect of life. So. I'm sure we have all noticed, especially after Thanksgiving, considering it was only last week, that um, perhaps we have a tendency to overeat and gain weight during the holidays. Um, So let's talk about some tips for us to avoid that gaining of weight that seems to be inevitable for some of us uh, when it comes around the holiday time. Well, it's easy to give in, that's for sure, and the, we have to pay. We we'll end up paying the price, so to avoid it is um, very important. So, yep. I came across some ideas, and that is number one to schedule an event or challenges through this entire holiday season. So, it might be a challenge like JT has the challenge of doing some really hard mountain bike rides in his areas and going up the mountains and should could be a challenge of trying to hit so many miles of those of like uh, my friends that are our are, are, are road riders they ride bikes on the road it could be the fact that you just uh, you know want to keep up your 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 challenge your daily challenge of doing workouts whatever it is the second thing is to incorporate a workout just prior to a big eating event <laughs> ah that's good that's really good uh, also, uh, plan a week-long challenge that keeps you motivated to work out. Uh, again, that's kind of like w- the first thing. But also protect, they say, your sleep routines and, and make sure that you leave uh, early enough uh, to to allow that to happen. I mean, you leave parties early enough or whatever the event is at night so you're getting your proper sleep. And then minimize the grazing and mindless eating, you know, when there's cookies available or cheese it's available. <laughs> cheese it's where would you get that from? Uh, nice cheap shot, Bob. I appreciate it. But, but the point that the the writer I saw make says, eat what you want, but avoid the overeating. Now that's a yeah. good point, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean that you know the simple so I kind of have a rule. So I don't the, – with the holiday season in general, number one, it's too long for me to eat the way I want to eat and not gain weight. So I look at it as like Thanksgiving. We knew we were going to multiple 
places to either have dessert or eat or do whatever. So I actually broke down those visits into how much I could eat on each visit. Very good. Um, Very good. Yeah. So I thought ahead of time. Um, but I also gave myself a break and giving myself a break actually made it to where I, I didn't really focus on the food because it's like, hey, listen, it's one day. You're not going to die, but you're going to regret it tomorrow when you get up to go for a run. Because like you said, if you schedule, hey, I got I to gotta do that holiday ride the next day or I got to do that holiday – you could fill in the blank with whatever exercise you want to yeah. do. You don't want to get up with a belly full of stuffing and um, do that stuff. So you're you're a little bit more aware of what the consequences are going to be. But honestly, Bob, you know it's it's funny as I got as I've gotten older, I just have a tendency to to not graze because I know the consequence and I don't want to deal with it. Right, and it's and it's yeah. good to be able to push back and it and all these things. You know, we're talking about. Um, it takes discipline. As we always say, though, discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life. So check out today's show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. And today's show is number 175. And submit your questions by email to JT at BobBrewBaker.com. And we'll get to answering that on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Quick word for The Power of Gratitude, the book that we're talking about this week that you'll find at BobBrewBaker.com. Uh, it's about gratitude and the power thereof. Check it out at BobBrewBaker.com. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast. And check out news, notes, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobRubaker.com. And listen next week for the Power Break Podcast. <laughs>